So the last problem here is number 10, and we've got secant theta divided by sine theta minus tangent theta equals cotangent theta. I think what I want to do here is try to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine and try to get this left side to look like the right side. It appears that the left-hand side is a little bit more complex in that there's more functions going on, just uh, more toys to play with on this side is one way to think about it. So secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, so I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over cosine theta all over sine theta, and I'm going to try to clean up that fraction on the next step. So, uh, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. That's our one of our uh, quotient identities. Now, I'm going to try to clean up this. I, I, I really, uh, having fractions and fractions makes me a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm going to try to rewrite this as just a single fraction. And the way to do that is simply using division. And so anytime you are dividing fractions, uh, you, you typically want to rewrite it as multiplication by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply 1 over cosine theta times 1 over sine theta. So these two are equivalent, right? Dividing by sine is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over sine. I'm going to leave this fraction the way it is for right now. Um, although it does look like, you know, just kind of looking forward, once we combine this, we're going to want to subtract these. So we're probably going to need to find a common denominator and kind of go from there. So we may be able to knock out two steps here. Let's, let's see what we got. So I'm going to multiply these together. That gives me 1 over cosine theta times sine theta. And then this would be my, my next fraction, but if I'm looking ahead, I say, okay, well, I actually need a sine in that denominator too to be able to combine these. So I'm gonna just be a little proactive here and multiply this by sine theta over sine theta and take care of that right now. Sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. And then we've got the cosine times sine. So now we've got a common denominator. So you might notice that as a theme on a lot of these uh, pr uh, proof problems involving fractions is, you know, you want to be comfortable finding that common denominator anytime you add or subtract fractions. So uh, we've got the common denominator. We can go ahead and combine these fractions. We've got 1 minus sine squared theta. Uh, that should kind of be a little, I don't know if a red flag is the right way to put it, but kind of catch your attention like, hey, that looks like a Pythagorean identity. So we're probably going to need to use that times sine theta. And that's, in fact, exactly what we want to do. 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. And once we rewrite that, we'll see that we actually have a cosine on the numerator and the, and the denominator that will uh, reduce to 1. Uh, we actually have two factors of cosine theta on top, so we only need to cancel out one of them. Um, remember, if I have cosine squared theta, uh, you don't bother writing this. I'm going to erase it, but what this really means is cosine theta times cosine theta. Remember, anytime you're squaring something, that means you've got that factor times itself. And so I'm only going to cancel out one of them, not, not the whole thing. So just be careful about that. So when I, uh, I go ahead and reduce one of those cosine, so I'll just scratch out the squared and scratch out that. This is going to reduce to 1, uh, leaving me with cosine theta over sine theta, and our, re not reciprocal, our quotient identity uh, says that this is equivalent to cotangent theta, and that's it. Okay, this is another kind of long one in terms of well, quite a few steps, took up a lot of room, mostly because we're dealing with a lot of fractions, and I'm, I guess using a lot of space to kind of make this as neat as possible. So that's number 10, uh, and that's it for today.